afternoon everyone and welcome back to the channel this is a video that i wanted to do since i bought this thing um i've been super excited to show everybody uh this triumph bonneville is a 2010 model this is the se um which changes a few things it gives you the two-tone paint on the tank the hand-painted pinstripe um of course you've got the aluminum 17 inch mag wheels um the rake and trail is a little different on this one versus the t100 or the t120 or the thruxton um so it makes it a really light steering kind of a nimble uh unit if you're looking for the you know the the quickest steering uh most nimble triumph bonneville from this era uh the the se is the one to get um but for whatever reason i've had issues with uh work schedule the weather's been terrible um I, I i did this video once before and realized that i had knocked my nd filter off of my camera lens so uh for whatever reason the universe doesn't want me to make this video but i'm going to go ahead and try to get it done today and uh, make sure that you guys can uh, uh can view this this new to me uh, 2010 triumph bonneville so a couple of things i wanted to talk about regarding the Triumph Bonneville one they had to sell these at a price point and they sold a lot of them right so obviously when you do that you have to kind of cut corners in certain places right so a hand-painted tank and the nice metallic paint and uh, some of the beautiful accents um, obviously they don't leave you a lot of money in the budget for high quality suspension parts high quality braking parts so as you can imagine in those two areas they did cut cost so when i talk about this today i'm going to talk about a lot of what you can expect with the stock suspension and obviously with the stock brakes now this has progressive springs in the forks with new cartridge emulators so the forks are going to handle different i added the olins these are uh the model 627 tr627 olins rear shocks and it makes it a completely different motorcycle but you're not likely to find one of these that already has olin shocks on it unless you're going to buy a newer thruxton but we won't get into that I will talk to you about the way this bike handles with the stock shocks on it so you know what to expect whenever you find one of these. It's an 865cc air-cooled parallel twin with an oil cooler that is not a radiator, so no, no water cooling on this model. Um, they did that on some of the more late models, uh, some of the more modern uh, Triumph Bonnevilles, but this is still an air-cooled unit. And uh, to me... It's absolutely beautiful. I as soon as I saw the Triumph Bonneville SE, because I like the mag wheels. I know a lot of people like the spokes. I, I'm a mag wheel fan. I like the aluminum wheels myself. I knew that an SE was the model that I wanted to get, and so I finally found one. It was down in Kansas City. It was four thousand dollars, right at twenty thousand miles on, and it was extremely well cared for. Came with a lot of extras. I've got side bags. I've got a trunk. I've got a king and queen seat. Um, he had an LED headlight on there, which I hated. It was kind of goofy looking, so I changed it back to the original style headlight. He put the uh, LED. Um, turn signals on there i'm not a big fan of those i might actually go back to the originals but uh yeah the brakes are um adequate <laughs> we'll just call them adequate they're nothing to write home about uh they don't stop extremely well but this isn't a performance machine this isn't something that was designed for you know carving through canyons really quickly and and obviously counting on your brakes to uh scrub off a lot of speed it's just not that type of motorcycle the t120 the thruxton you'll notice those bikes um you know around this era shortly after this era they started adding the twin front brakes uh where the the smaller engine bonneville still got the single front brake so the brakes aren't great um but keep in mind this is a modern classic so modern classic usually means they're trying to capture the look of the classic motorcycle but also making it more modern and more reliable more dependable more usable these brakes are better than you know the the 1960s uh, triumph bonneville by far so the engine's better uh, everything's better um they just tried to make sure that they captured that you know older look 
and still made it more rideable and more dependable. Uh, adjustable levers, both sides, which is really handy. This is stuff where they did not cheap out. Um, it is a fuel injected engine disguised as a carbureted engine. So they took carburetor bodies and they put the fuel injection in the carburetor bodies. This choke knob is not actually a choke knob at all, but it is a fast idle knob. So whenever you're warming it up, you can start it up and pull this out and it will actually idle fast. And then when you get ready to ride, you can just shut that off and, and uh, the fast idle mode is off. So they did a really good job of keeping with the theme, um, modern classic, obviously. They went to great lengths to disguise all the, the modern aspects of this bike. But let's take it for a ride and we'll talk about it some more. Today, since this is all about classics, this is all about nostalgia, we are down here at basically where everything began for St. Joseph, Missouri. This is the Missouri River, this is Riverfront Park, and everything, obviously the settlers started here on the west side by the river. We're gonna go east, and we're going to go through an area that I like called Mansions Row, and we're just gonna take a peek at a couple of mansions, older, um, you know, some of the early money that was in this town, uh, and see where they lived and uh, some pretty cool old mansions so we'll we'll ride through that area and uh, you'll get to check that out with me give you a sound check here i love the way it sounds just love the way it sounds terrific now this is not the stock exhaust either. These are the TORS, T-O-R-S, stands for Triumph Off-Road Silencers. They open up the hole in the rear. You can see those holes are bigger than the originals, and they also removed some or all of the baffling. I'm not sure exactly what they did to the baffling, but they are considerably louder. To me, this exhaust is just right. It is the Goldilocks of Triumph Bonneville off-road exhaust for me everybody's a little different some people probably want it louder I do not I think it is absolutely perfect so first thing when you get on the Bonneville first thing you'll notice their riding position their ergonomics are absolutely perfect they are a motorcycle ergonomics uh, setup and I remember watching a it was Fortnine, who I, I love Fortnine's videos, F-O-R-T-N-I-N-E, those are our friends up in Canada, uh, motorcycle enthusiasts that make the best YouTube content that you can find on any subject. He described the Triumph T100, which is a Bonneville. It is uh, very similar to this, what I'm riding here. And he said, if you picture yourself, just you sit down and you just picture yourself riding a motorcycle, and freeze those are exactly the ergonomics that you'll find on a triumph bonneville and that's why everybody loves them well he, he could not be more correct because the ergonomics on this are just perfect uh the seating position in relation to the pegs if you're really really tall you might have a little bit of a cramp feeling i'm six foot one and i don't feel cramped on it at all but it does have a really low seat height so that generally, you know, brings the pegs and the seat together a little bit closer. The bars are in the perfect position for me. Nice wide bars. So super, super comfortable as far as ergonomics go. Uh, the seat on this isn't great. It's not the best seat in the world. Um, but it's a lot better now that I change the rear shocks. Funny how that works, right? So... Whenever I bought this and it had the stock rear shocks on it, I thought, my goodness, this seat sucks. This is, <laughs> this is like sitting on a wooden park bench. Well, uh, when I changed the shocks, it transformed everything. Not just the handling, but the comfort. My goodness, the comfort is just night and day uh, from where it was with the original shocks. So if you're on a Triumph Bonneville and you don't like the, the time in the saddle uh, 
wearing out your rump, making your rump numb, try to change the rear shocks. See what you think about it then, because it, it makes a huge difference. This also has, in addition to the Tours silencers, it also has K&N pod air filters, just the open element pod filters that, with the boots that just screw right onto the, the, the carburetor bodies. They're not carburetors, they're carburetor bodies. So it has a nasally, real throaty intake noise and induction noise, and we'll get to check that out. Uh, at a full throttle here in a little bit but we're not going to do it in these residential areas for sure okay this is the start of a few of the mansions here and we're not going to go through every mansion in st joe that would be ridiculous we're here to talk about the triumph bonneville right but we're a little nostalgic today so we are going to check out some of these old homes some of these homes where all the money was at early uh st joseph missouri you can see just the beautiful architecture of some of these homes. Just terrific. That one right there is my favorite. Been by that house a lot. I just I love the upper balcony area up there. And I don't know whether they had maybe some sort of a garden up there or what. But a lot of these homes are kind of part of the historical society so some people get a hold of them and they get grants to try to restore them and i think that's wonderful i think we need to do everything we can to keep these th i mean they're works of art keep these things alive and keep them standing a couple more over here that are obviously occupied so these i'd, I'd be really interested to see what the inside of some of these homes look like because they're currently occupied old brick roads right that's what the the wealthy folks had they had brick they left all the dirt roads to the peasants so wealthy folks had bricks Some nice three-story old brick homes super cool but all right let's get back to the triumph bonneville here this is a this old brick road is actually an excellent test for those olins <laughs> Look at that, just marvelous. They do not make them like that anymore, folks. Okay, we're gonna go down to the parkway. We're gonna go to the uh, Northwest Parkway in St. Joseph and we'll we'll kind of blast through some corners a little bit and when we'll lean it over a little bit and I, I'll let you hear that uh, induction noise I was talking about. Somebody is practicing their parallel parking. Stop socialism. Okay. You do you, buddy. Whatever you're into. Alright. Police station here. We will, will not be breaking any laws in this area. Okay. So, getting back to the Bonneville here. It is the quintessential motorcycle. I remember uh, watching a video, it was Revzilla, which I'm sure you're familiar with Revzilla if you're into motorcycles. Um, it is kind of a United States go-to for, uh, if you're in the US, you're familiar with Revzilla. Um, kind of our go-to for, you know, pretty much anything motorcycles, whether it's, you know, video content on YouTube or, you know, parts for motorcycles, um, you know, gear. Uh, safety gear any of that so they had a video where they were on I believe it was a t100 as well but all those Bonnevilles you know they're kind of t100 the t120 the, the Thruxton you know they, they all kind of they fall under that same umbrella of Bonneville pretty much the same chassis with some tweaks here and there um, and uh, it was super interesting because uh, somebody said, somebody wrote in and asked Revzilla if the Triumph Bonneville were an NBA player, which NBA player would it be and why? And the answer Revzilla gave to that was Jerry West. Now, if you don't know who Jerry West is, Jerry West is the NBA logo man. He is the guy 
that is basically dribbling that ball kind of leaned over a little bit in that NBA logo so every time you see an NBA logo that is Jerry West and it was a perfect metaphor for what the Triumph Bonneville is oh no this can't be good well nobody's really scrambling around so maybe we're okay maybe everybody's all right let's hope so uh, but Jerry West being the the man that's in the NBA logo, well, he's basically the face of the NBA based on, you know, the logo, obviously. And the Triumph Bonneville, if you look at the silhouette of a Triumph Bonneville, it's maybe the most recognizable motorcycle silhouette in the history of motorcycles. You know, started in 1959, and they've made, obviously, changes to help make it more modern, more reliable, and all that, more efficient. But aesthetically, for the most part, it stayed very similar. And I think that's just super cool, super, super good way to describe the Triumph Bonneville. So we'll, we'll open it up here in a second, and we'll, we'll get some induction noise, and I don't know how much of the induction noise you can pick up on this mic, or how much of the exhaust noise, but it'll straighten out here in a second, and we'll We'll give it the beans. It's not a it's not a rocket ship, folks, but it is a great engine to pair with this chassis. Here we go. I don't know how much you can hear that. It's a delightful sound. I love it all. I love the whole experience. I love the I love the induction noise. I love the exhaust noise. I love it. But yeah, so when you talk about performance, okay, so you might find it underwhelming for a motorcycle. But underwhelming for a motorcycle is <laughs> It's still pretty, <laughs> still pretty substantial uh, by traveling standards. I'll put it this way. If you look at the stock specs on this, zero to 60, quarter mile time, what have you, it's right about in line with a C5 Corvette. Now, a C5 Corvette, especially by modern car standards, isn't gonna blow your skirt up. But would anybody ever really, unless you're just an asshole and you're just being jaded about everything, would anybody ever really drive a C5 Corvette and think, eh, I, I can't stand this, just too damn slow, just not enough? Not, not really. Yes, I get it. It's not, <laughs> it's not the the rocket ship that modern cars are or modern motorcycles or what have you. But I mean, let's keep in mind. 0 to 60 in 4.8 seconds was pretty damn quick not that long ago and now of course we're gonna act like that's just you, you can't even I can't even pilot this machine it's just too slow that's ridiculous it's it's plenty it's adequate you're not gonna get on this and you're not gonna go smoke your buddy's R1 it's not what this was made for this is not a it's not a sport motorcycle it's this is a modern classic. This is a, uh, what they would have called back then, I, I suppose, a naked standard uh, motorcycle. So this is not meant to be, you know, supremely quick and powerful, and, you know, Canyon Carver and all that. It's a great motorcycle to just get on and cruise. It puts a smile on my face every time I'm on it. Now, we will talk about a couple of shortcomings. Uh, I've mentioned the brakes and the suspension. So those need to be addressed. Not so much the brakes, but those shocks need to be addressed. Um, not because, oh my God, it's unrideable the way it is. But let's be honest. When you're dealing with shocks that are 14 years old, as these were, whether the shocks were high quality or not in the first place, is, is starting to become irrelevant. At this point, it's like 14 year old shocks, you should probably just go ahead and replace them. Especially when you're talking about 
OEM entry level, you know, cheap shocks. So I would address that immediately, and I did address that immediately. Um, you won't regret it. It handles so much better. There are other options. You don't have to go straight to the top of the line Olins. I just thought for me personally, if I cheap out a little bit and I save a couple of hundred bucks and I go to uh, a mid-grade set of shocks, say some YSS shocks, which are a pretty good mid-grade for the Bonneville, am I going to be riding it and constantly thinking, man, what would it ride like with that old what if i had just spent a couple of hundred extra dollars and bought the old one so i'm like you know what it really just doesn't make a whole lot of sense for me to save a couple of hundred bucks and then always wonder well what if and i'm glad i did i'm glad i did and i'm glad i went ahead and splurged and got the the Olins. very very pleased with them it rides so beautifully so buttery smooth the uh yeah the seat like i said spending a lot of time in the saddle riding for a couple of hours I, I i don't have any discomfort in my rear like i did before so very pleased that i made that decision very pleased that i went with the Olins. your results may vary you may want to go you know go go to a mid-grade and that may be good enough i didn't buy the Olins because i plan on putting this thing on the track or anything crazy like that i mainly bought them for comfort and not so much you know crazy handling you know fast going to the track all that stuff uh more just confidence in corners because those the factory shocks can have a bit of a pogo stick <laughs> effect so I'll, I'll try to describe it the best i can because they were 14 years old i don't know if they were originally valved poorly or maybe they're just not valve for somebody of my weight um, which is likely the case but what's odd is i'm a heavier rider i'm 250 pounds six foot one and i felt like the compression damping was pretty firm which is odd because i'm a heavier rider typically uh, the compression damping feels a little soft but it felt firm however the rebound damping felt soft so it kind of had this effect where it was it would compress firm you could feel it compress when you'd hit a low spot in the road feel it compress firm it's not bottoming out it's just compressing really firm midway through the stroke and then it's allowed to almost uncontrollably rebound where you know because a shock absorber is not holding you up that's the springs job well, the spring is just going to sit there and bounce forever almost you know um, and obviously that inertia is just going to keep it bouncing so what a shock's job is is to do is control that compression and that rebound so it was compressing tight and then it was allowing it to rebound a lot softer than it seemed like it was compressing so you just kind of got this pogo stick effect. It's about the only way that I can describe it, where it just kind of uncontrollably uh, bounced back up. And then, of course, it would try to go back down and compress firm and then come back up uncontrollably. So especially going through corners and stuff like that, when you'd hit bumps, you'd feel a lot of wobble in that rear. And it was kind of uneasy. So not to mention the fact that it was just flat out uncomfortable. So... I had it max preload, um, which was still good enough. I mean, the, the springs weren't weak. I had it max preload, and I never felt it bottom out. Of course, I don't ride real fast through rough areas either, so I always try to keep that under control. But, yeah, it's uh, it's so much better now. Hitting bumps, um, so much more controlled. Uh, super, super smooth going over all these bumps. And I'm not even at max preload. I did... Uh, the retailer that I bought these from I did give them my weight my riding style and they valved them to my weight and they sprung them to my weight and uh, preloaded them to my weight so these are actually set up for a rider my size which uh, that makes a world of difference too so the front forks still seem a little firm um i don't know if that's normal i might actually pull those caps off and see if if the previous owner 
was telling the truth uh, about you know having the progressive springs and all that because it still seems a little firm to me and it shouldn't again for a rider my my size my weight shouldn't seem firm but it still does but yeah, good visibility for the mirrors like i said nice wide handlebars beautiful clock staring back at you giving you just the bare essentials giving you speed uh motorcycle speed and engine speed that is it uh, you know you know the speed that you are traveling you know the speed that your engine is revving and that's all you get so you get a tachometer you get a speedometer and you get nothing else uh, you get a couple of dummy lights yeah, neutral position, uh, high beams, your turn signals, and oil pressure, but no fuel gauge, so you just kind of keep track of mileage, not a very big deal. Um, I know on this, uh, my last fuel tank, I got 40 miles to the gallon, which is not great, but I know that, you know, 4.2 gallon tank, so at about 150 miles, I better be fine in some place because I'm, I'm getting pretty close. I've never had the fuel light come on. I've actually never let it get to 150 anyway. I just know that that's kind of, that's the max that I'm going to feel safe with is uh, going about 150 miles to a tank. So it's not the most efficient unit. It's not the quickest unit. It's interesting because I had a co-worker come in and when I rode this to work a few weeks ago and co-worker said, hey, which motorcycle do you like better out of this and your, your BMW? So I have a 2007 BMW F800 ST it's a sport touring machine and I, I told him well I said the BMW is lighter it's quicker it stops better it's more efficient it's more comfortable for long trips and I think I like the Bonneville better <laughs> which is a very confusing response understandably but it's about the Bonneville soul right it's about its character the Bonneville and it may not have this effect on everybody that's fine but the way it makes me feel when I ride it I feel like a, a kid again I feel like that that little boy that went down to the to the neighbor's house and rode around on their son's 50 cc Honda dirt bike for the first time you know when I was maybe nine years old or so and that that ear-to-ear -ear grin that yeah, I just could not get rid of I could not ride that motorcycle without smiling and the, the Bonneville kind of has that same effect on me I love the way it looks I love the way it sounds I love the way it feels you know it's a little vibey just enough to kind of remind you that you're on a motorcycle but kind of has that that low uh, thumping exhaust uh, whether you're at idle or or just you know taking off accelerating pulling through the gears you know it kind of has that i don't want to say antiquated but kind of that uh, uh less refined uh transmission feel when you're changing gears kind of clunky uh switching gears it's it's not as precise and refined as the bmw um just character right it just it has a soul and it, it speaks to me i ride by big panes of glass and i'm constantly staring at the silhouette of the motorcycle and those panes of glass i don't do that with the bmw just with the bonneville so to be honest with you it's just the way it makes me feel when i'm on it it doesn't do really anything better than the bmw i would argue ergos um, which some people like the more aggressive ergos where the bmw gives you um, grips are a little bit closer together it leans you forward more like a sport bike um i'm 43 years old i don't uh i don't necessarily dig that anymore so um i like these more upright ergos uh more conservative ergos but that's about it other than that the bmw is pretty much better in every way but it doesn't have the look it doesn't have the sound it doesn't have the feel so for those reasons i think the triumph bonneville is just an absolute sweetheart of a motorcycle i love it i absolutely love riding it every second um, i might actually try to take it on a kind of a shorter trip um, my cousin who lives in parkville so going uh kind of back roads back highways about an hour there and about an hour back so that should be just fine on this i've already ridden you know for you know not that distance but i've ridden around for you know two hours with these all in shocks it's definitely doable so i would uh, i'd probably have a little bit of 
kind of a numb rear if I did it with the original shocks, but I think I'm good to go on this one. But um, that's about all I have for this. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in and letting me share this with you. Hopefully this video comes out okay. If you're watching this, I guess it did. So until then, folks, thank you so much for tuning in. Thanks for watching and staying till the end. And until next time, have a great day.